finally, we're heading back to the heart of Cardiff for a show I went to in July and was my favourite of the year. I was lucky enough to go to three shows at Cardiff Castle this summer, but the highlight was without a doubt hosier. Having shows at Cardiff Castle is such a treat with incredible surroundings and already announced to play at this historic venue next year are the Smashing Pumpkins, the National, Idols, Avril Lavigne and many more. If you do get tickets for any of those shows, my top tip is to head all the way to the right when you get in. There's usually way more space there, although it does make leaving a little bit trickier and a bit more time in queues. I went to the Hosier gig without knowing much about his discography, to be honest, aside from the singles, but I was blown away by his voice and musicianship at the show. If you like Hosier, the good news is he will be back in Wales next summer with a headline set at Chepstow Racecourse on the 9th of July 2024. Before I play this last song, this is going to be the last that you hear of me, so thank you so much for listening. I hope it inspired you to visit some of these venues in 2024 and enjoy some of the amazing live music that we get here in Cardiff. So without any further ado, here is Hosier with Eat Your Young. I think I first used a wheelchair when I went to Disney World in Florida in 2017 and obviously that's a lot of walking. If you guys have been or if you've heard of how the map works out in Disney World, it's all just a lot of walking. You get a lot of steps in when you go to Disney World. So I think we were at Epcot and we were going around all the different countries and I was having a blast but I was getting so tired and my muscles were really beginning to hurt, especially my legs. So I remember my mum asking if... I wanted to rent a wheelchair to sit in. I I thought, I couldn't stand the thought of that. I don't want to sit in a wheelchair. I don't want to look disabled. I don't want to do that. But I knew in my heart that I had to use it because there was no other way I was going to survive the rest of the day and the rest of this trip. So my mum went and got a wheelchair and I remember sitting down on it and just feeling weight lifting off my shoulders, but also feeling really embarrassed and guilty that I was sat in a wheelchair I was like, only old people sit in wheelchairs. What What am I doing? Like, now people know. Now people are going to feel sorry for me. Don't get me wrong, I love attention, but not in this way. <laughs> I did not want people staring at me. And you know, like, you know when you see people in wheelchairs, you don't want to be disrespectful to them. So you don't want to kind of ignore them and ignore that they're there, but you don't want to stare. So you kind of look at them and then you kind of look away. But it's like, they're just normal human beings. I don't know why we do this as a society. And even though I'm a wheelchair user, I still do this because it's like, I acknowledge that you're disabled or I acknowledge that you're in a wheelchair, but don't see you any less of a human being than anyone else. So I think I was very much in denial when I first started using a wheelchair. I was very adamant that this wasn't going to define me. This wasn't going to take over my life. But I think it definitely got to a point during that trip where I I caved and I knew I had to just face the fact that a wheelchair was going to help me and that I needed it and that a wheelchair should be my friend and not something to be embarrassed of. I remember crying the first time I used that wheelchair in Disney World. I remember being so embarrassed but now it just helps me and I remember getting out of the wheelchair afterwards and people staring at me like as if to say, what? She was in a wheelchair, now she can walk? Has this person just been healed? And essentially, not everyone in a wheelchair can't walk. And that's something that I don't think people consider when they see someone in a wheelchair. Welcome to Finding Emo, episode seven. In this episode, we discuss representations of hometowns and suburbia in emo from the cliché to the complex, and look at how seasons set these songs like a coming-of-age film. To start, here's American Football. This is kind of exciting. So the release comes after Kim Hon's recent feature on BBC Three's Paranormal with Sean Alary. Now, this was a really, really good series. I would really recommend going back and watching this on iPlayer. Very, very spooky. Um, nice little folk horror kind of story from North Wales which just seems like a bit of a a haunted place sometimes I feel like I might believe in ghosts if I lived up there the band have also had a wonderful hometown honour of the Teen Clan pub naming a craft beer after them oh how cute and Kim Hahn, having received a lot of support from BBC Radio Wales and BBC Radio Cymru, uh, the new album kind of positions them as a very, very exciting band, kind of on the forefront of what music in Wales is doing right now. 
Yeah. Guess what we'll game we have next now? <laughs> Swansea. We used to South Wales Guess Derby. I can't go anymore. <laughs> Why? Um, I can't go. My um stepdad said he couldn't get um the third. Even my dad said he could, my stepdad couldn't um, said he couldn't get the third ticket. Yeah. Um. So I was quite good about that. But <laughs> um, what I'll do is, um, are you going to the game? Yeah. Bro, I'm a season ticket holder. I go, ah, I go to every home game. Do you know what we should do now? Nah. We should um, FaceTime. You should. Yeah. You <laughs> should FaceTime. It's quarter to eight kick off. I know. Yeah. The thing is, on a sa- Saturday night. That afternoon, Wales kick off the World Cup game in way France. Yeah, the Rugby World Cup. Wales, Wales literally, first game is. It's gonna be Saturday. packed on Cardiff. Yeah, because Everyone's literally be drunk. No, pl- and all kick off. Everyone's gonna be in the pubs. Everyone's gonna be in the pubs. Plus, they'll probably hold it in uh, on a screen outside the yeah. Millennium. Yeah, the Principality. So literally, and it's just like a little drive over. Yeah. So it's gonna be it's gonna be random, don't it? Yeah, you can literally see them in the stadium from the Cardiff. Yeah, you can see it from the car park. I oh, know. So that's gonna be an eventful game. So Lady Ice is a female MC, I think, from Manchester. Um, so she was a contestant. She's this is what she's best known for. She's a she was a contestant for the rap game, um, which is by Crafton Conan and DJ Target. She went viral. Uh, she's had a couple of tracks on GRM Daily. She had a fire in a booth, I think, as well. And she's been killing it ever since, man. She's been taking the game by mm. storm. So, yeah. And she's coming to Cardiff to show you lot what she's on. So yeah. I'm excited, man. <laughs> so how's your like relationship with Cardiff? How, how do you I've find always, it now? It's just always felt like a home away from home. Like my home, home is Swansea mm-hmm. all the way. But um, coming up to Cardiff and just seeing like, whoa like big city but then also you've got this beautiful countryside like coinciding with each other and it's so beautiful and yeah i've been it has a special place in my heart because i've been coming here again like since i was uh like five or six staying over with my dad and then we'd go like to the lego shop and all these places (laughs) so i got and he showed me like the looks and crannies and the best places when like in boot park when you need a bit of calm and when i realized there was such an incredible music scene here and a whole music college i was like sign me up i've got to be here and yeah i've never i've never regretted coming to cardiff because how could you like the mu- and then i got to work in the music scene i got to meet so many incredible artists like it's it's incredible how ev- nice everyone is as, as well <laughs> as talented like it's insane like yeah. i've never like i've never felt like uncomfortable with anyone in the scene because everyone's just so welcoming everyone's so kind and we all just want to support each other and i feel like that's just like that's like kind of a welsh community thing as well it is very well like, it's just very yeah. it's so beautiful and i'm i've like coming here to cardiff is just incredible there's so many projects here mm. as well that support like i did the anthem youth forum um shout out oh, to them and resonant and i've worked with like a company called be extra as well and i've had the pleasure to rep with forte in some gigs and they're just it's incredible and i love my favourite thing to say is I love being Welsh, I love being queer, and I love being a queer in Wales. I was going to ask, I know you've said this a couple of times to me, that kind of the patterns of gardening are changing a bit, especially with kind of climate change and, and new weather patterns that we're seeing, where we have much more intense winters, and then, but also on the other hand, much more intense summers that maybe start a little bit earlier. So... How have you found that climate change is affecting, you know, your planting patterns or, or any other work that you do in the garden? OK, I've got two answers to that question. So in the six years that I've been doing it, doing it which on the, on, the, uh, on the scale of um, you know, 4.5 billion years of the Earth existing, it's not a great <laughs> uh, statistical sample. But in the six years I've been doing it, Every year has been chaotic and different, so that I can't even pr- uh, predict a pattern. So as, as you say, the extremes are worse. Last year, we had 40 degrees for a few days, 40 degrees, and then minus 15 in December. That's a, a range of 55 degrees centigrade, which any plant, you're going to struggle. And, and then this year, we had, I think, about, I can't remember the way around, it was, it was like a really... A warm start to the year. The spring was excellent. So you think, way everything's taken off. It's going to be a brilliant year. And then June, it just rained. The whole of June just rained. So it confuses the hell out of the plants because they sort of stop and start. And I think over my six years, that's been, you know, 
you can expect the unexpected, unexpected. But that is the weather to a certain extent. It's a chaotic system. But talking to um, the second answer to your question, talking to Uncle George, who, who's had 50 years of gardening, very traditional uh, gardener, he, he, whenever I, I say I'm going to plant something, he always says, that's too early. You know, you leave that. And speaking to him, he, he didn't start gardening as such sort of till mid-April and May. That would be the start of his gardening year, and and that's that's no longer applies. I I can plant potatoes going on the first of March. I can start planting seeds in the greenhouse sometimes even in February, and each time he says, oh, what, what, "Are you mad? You're doing that too early," and and it grows. Now, what I take to me for that is that his his view of the gardening world and the climate over one lifetime is radically different to what I'm experiencing, and that's the extent of. Uh, I don't want to say calamity, uh, but, but that's... I think you can say calamity at this point. Yeah, I mean, you'll probably... By the time you, you're you into gardening, you'll probably be harvesting pineapples on Christmas Day in your garden in Aberdeen. <laughs> at this rate. I mean, you know, and that's, that's terrifying. Oh, my God. Gosh. Oh my gosh. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Ryan Vleen. Do you actually do a body of the maid in a rhino miso? Yeah. Like, be meffy. If you want to clue, sit the door no man or all tan. I grave your hair and dare of a shape of your talent at down. I'll be in the need in your bit. Embarrassing at door. On. Right. Yeah. Tomb. Grand Serif Hornets. Carry tan and I might just, you know, turn the door. He bought an uh, plant in, yeah, I'm sure. Um, it's not like we're really glad not sure I'm sir. We're on, yeah, went on there. Band, come right, cool. And shot a band, yeah, come right, cool. Need to rid me less of me on band arash. Back and back, pesh, not no, not so fun. It's now in the old film, we were probably in the 90s, no, but. And hin and hin and tan were the anti-villain ever. We were really the, you know, you know, mind the same fun. It's on them bit fans. On we knew one half your band hin. Ah, uh, we call your tanny a tan a ma, an a tar, ever to neon Irish band and a well, road rage, well, Mulder and Scully. Have you ever seen do a poem in Shire Dam? Be Shire Dam Catatonia, ah, a can international velvet. Amazing, love that. And you said you're from Carnarvon, yeah. is that right? Yeah. What is what was it like growing up there? Because that's kind of that's quite rural, isn't it? Yeah. So, does what's it like growing up? I guess with a limited music scene, would you say? Yeah, maybe. I think it's um, you know, I was talking to somebody about this the other day, but I think like Wales has come so far in terms of like music and sexuality and everything. I think we're like kind of like ahead of the game <laughs> a little bit, um, which is very different to how I felt when I grew up, maybe. Um, I say maybe, I definitely know that as a fact. Like I didn't feel like I could like come out. Like I was so scared. Like I didn't know a gay person. Like I was so terrified. And then all of a sudden, like I feel like Wales is just like this, so accepting and so comforting and so lovely. And like the music's great. The atmosphere's great. Um, so yeah, I feel really proud to be from Wales and I feel grateful to come home. Yeah, that's so nice. Uh, we're the first female hijabi Muslim referees in Wales. Hey. So a lot of the stuff we do is centered around football. Um, and so we're both on the mentoring program with, FAW. with, the, FA- with the FAW. And I'm the vice chair of the youth council, newly appointed. Amazing. Cool. And, and yeah. Rashid? Rashid? Um, like Aliza said, we're referees and we're also coaches. Oh, you forgot that. Yeah. Um, we're starting our own girls' team too in Grangetown, so. Hi, you're listening to the Tea Cozy on Radio Platform, and that was Welcome to the Sidelines by Amy Michelle. Today, all the chill music that you hear is from the soundtrack of Heartstopper, so, spoilers ahead in what I'm going to talk about. Um, so moving on from Imogen, I want to talk about the Paris trip f- from season two now. Um, and as the token French person here, I think it was really well done. Um, they did some really nice activities, and one of my favorite bits was when um, Tao and Elle are at the mu- uh, are at the Musée de Montmartre, 
um, because it really showcases their personalities and their interests and things. Um, the Paris trip, the Paris trip um, also has a lot of scenes that are from the books and um, I guess it was, you know, fan favorites um, and the production team did not disappoint in that sense. Uh, I especially laughed when they are walking up the Eiffel Tower stairs because that's exactly the vibe that I got when I was reading the books. Um, and most of all, I really appreciate the fact that they didn't go into big cliches about romantic Paris or France, like playing the accordion music at every landscape shot or anything. Um, and they, um, yeah, they actually played some fun French artists, which we're going to listen to now, starting with Luan and her song On est beau. Enjoy! What was most pleasing was the way in which the young people were so confident and empowered by the campaign. Uh, I work with Child Friendly Cardiff. I'm 13. I've been working with them for three years. That's started amazing. when I was 10. Uh, we make sure that children's rights are implemented in all parts of Cardiff and make sure that it's a safe and happy place to grow up. Yeah, it's really fun. We, we're all, Everyone in the group is so, such good friends. It's really fun to work with. Hi, my name's Levi and I'm 10 years old. Um, I've come here today to champion the rights of the child above other things. I think all children, even if they don't have enough money or anything, should have a go at everything. So I've come here today to collect a um, award as part of the um, Cardiff Death Youth Club group. I think it was back in 2021. We done a... Um, Film like what it's like to be deaf. I think at first there was our own idea. People don't really understand them. They think you're a kid, nothing matters, you'll be fine. But no, we we have like the same worries, same actions as you every other day. Most young people were pleased by the news and agreed that Cardiff was a child-friendly environment. So when I'm at work, we have this thing where we have to go around and we say one thing that we're grateful for today. It just oh, brightens us up. So what's that, one thing cute. Yeah, you guys are grateful for today? You guys. Okay, oh. I was going to say that. Yeah. And just being you, I guess. Yeah, obviously being you. What am I grateful for? I'm grateful for being able to have this space yeah. where I can come to and I can come and talk and see people. Except if I said I like, don't leave my house if I'm not down your down rehearsal so it's just nice to be yeah and see you all don't break for this you can see that this face means a lot to you guys it's nice yeah Yeah, I was literally gonna say the same thing like I'm grateful just to be able to like we can basically come here whenever we want and record a show and talk about whatever we want which like obviously makes us happy so and what inspired you guys to start a show (laughs) um we're doing a training I, we didn't really know if we were going to really like it. So we, we thought, oh, we'll just do the training, and then if we like it, do it. If we don't, then I guess yeah, it's just no So I only it. found out that I was doing a training, like, the night before. Yeah. So uh, I was like, oh, OK, I might as well just go, go with the phone. And then Tom was like, oh, do you want to come down, like, tomorrow and record the show? So we were like, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's, and then I, let's, let's go. come, like, every week since, basically. Where did the idea for Climate Action Group, Our Earth, Our History, come from? I know that in like 2019, I get that Camry declared a climate crisis amongst a lot of organizations. So did that have anything to do with that? And yeah. Yeah, partly. Um, I would say that it started with us wanting to do an environment project. I think we were, and also the museum kind of, you know, saying that it'd be really good for the, for the youth engagement department to run something like that. Um, we did a project called Future is Fungal, which was looking at queer ecology and fungi um, in partnership with Cardiff University. And um, we hired ACPs to work on that. Young people in the Bloyth project, sorry, ACPs that <laughs> are what we call the young people that work for us. <laughs> we have two Amgia, Amgia. Sorry, again, how do you call them? Oh, ACPs, which is Amgia the Cymru Producers. <laughs> um, but so I actually, yeah, anyway, we should have said that. Anyway, because I'm always going to say <laughs> <Yeah>. ACPs. <laughs> But um, one, of, we know now. one of the young people on that project is a climate activist, a scientist and an artist called Izzy McLeod, and who has done tons and tons of work with us um, through Blythe over the last, I think, like four three years. years. Yeah. Three, four years. And um, so they came to us and had this idea for a project, which was Our Earth, Our History. And uh, we just were like, yeah, we're going to support you to create it. And so that young person is leading on the project and we're just kind of supporting um, 
on delivery. Yeah.